Hey vinyl people! Um, yeah, I'm still sitting in this corner of the room because uh, despite the fact that we're in the middle of a, quite a cold winter here with a lot of minus degrees, um, right now there is a lot of sun on the other side where I'm usually sitting and uh, you almost, you can't, you can't shoot a video with uh, I have this kind of a uh, you know, uh, sort of skylight like uh, windows and when the sun is falling in um, it destroys the picture basically you can't see anything so um, that's why I'm sitting here but I don't think this is a very important piece of information to you isn't it <laughs> so let's talk about records instead um, I don't know if you know this one this is the first album by the German band Rheingold um, this uh, also came out as a soundtrack to a quite a controversial early 80s movies here in Germany um, that uh, caused that caused all kind of uh, debate and discussion. Yet um, probably what's mostly remembered about it is uh, this album and its title song "Fun Fun Fanatisch." Now Rheingold is um, quite a great example of very late uh, NDV or N. DW, although for me it sounds more like the sort of the uh, early German new wave music and uh, when I started to go into new wave clubs uh, in the mid 80s or late 80s uh, this song was uh, quite dominant in all the clubs and all the discos and uh, so even in the later years when uh, kind of the gothic music took the scene over you could still hear this the, the first track from this album quite a lot it's just a very good song yeah now uh, um, quite a similar era is this album here um, Satan, Bugs Bunny and Me by the Cassandra Complex Cassandra Complex is a uh, sort of an independent new wave underground project uh, that uh, always uh, very well combined um, a uh, very driving electronic keyboard sound with uh, quite uh, harsh uh, guitar music but uh, very balanced I always like their music um, great singer great songs um, this is uh, always quite a pleasant experience so uh, if you don't know the Cassandra complex it's high time to figure it all out because this is a great album check it out Satan Bugs Bunny and me so uh, the style completely changed with the next album uh, which is uh, Joji Hirota's album I think it was his second album The Wheel of Fortune now Joji Hirota is a Japanese drummer and percussionist and this album is uh, well dominantly it's a uh, fusion album I would say but it has some very interesting uh, uh, ambient elements in it very very spheric sounds but then again combined with a lot of uh, intense drumming so it's a very good record I mean if, if you want to imagine what it sounds like it's uh, it's like imagine uh, an album that's exactly in the middle between Uwe Buschköder's album and an album by Billy Cobham and it's exactly in the middle of that but it's always a bit strange to describe music with words it makes more sense to listen to it right so um, look it up maybe you like it not everybody knows this one even though it's 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 not particularly rare I mean you get this record probably for uh, I don't know a couple of dollars um, Joji Hirota now it was time for another album by Vangelis so uh, this is one of his 80s albums Soil Activities uh, it looks like a soundtrack to another documentary but actually it's not it's just the album created by Vangelis as a concept about all the life that exists in soil so uh, you got a lot of interesting zoological pictures on it um, and this is a, uh, you know, it's a water. I don't, I don't know how you say it in English. I think do you call it a water beetle. I mean, you have to look closer, but then you realize, oh yes, that's just, uh, it's just an interesting shot from front, 
a, a water beetle or water bug or I don't know how you call it in English. I know they can bite because I figured that out when I was a child. So that's all festivities. It's a quite good uh, Vangelis album, but uh, that's not surprising. Now this came in a rather similar time period um, as he did the Blade Runner soundtrack, so you hear some of the same synthesizers on it. So with the next album we jumped to the early 90s. This is one by Brian Eno and it's called Nerve Net. Now this is a nice reissue that came out on Opal. The original album is from 1992 and uh, this is a sort of a double album gatefold design. And uh, so of course it came with the little download card. Do I not love those? Um, but uh, this is not an ambient album. That needs to be said. This is one of those albums uh, that Eno does or did that are quite uh, different in style. It's in parts. It's very rhythmic, and uh, yeah, quite progressive, quite experimental. But there's always a lot of beats going on and a lot of uh, a lot of sort of power electronic sounds. Uh, nice inlay sleeve. So this is all very well uh, crafted product by Opal. Let me take out one of the discs. So it's quite nice, isn't it here? And what I like about it, they are not very expensive. I mean, you get them here in Europe, you get them for like 20 euro, which is quite okay, I think, for uh, this uh, kind of record. So after I heard this, I went for a different album. Um, but somehow there is some kind of a musical segue between these two albums. Now this is, of course, a seminal production. This is Vegas by the Crystal Method, sort of late 90s uh, uh, techno album. Um, 97 I would say, but I could be wrong also. Although, uh, yes, 97. I was right. Now, um, this is one of those uh, famous uh, sort of techno albums that a lot of people have at home. And uh, and I think the reason for it is that it's actually not very danceable. <laughs> I mean, the music on it is well known and probably everybody heard some track from this album in a movie or in TV shows, etc. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great sort of power rhythm music, yet uh, actually it's not, the kind of, it's not the kind of sound you would play on a dance floor, at least not in the clubs that I used to go to. So. Um, so probably it's one of those cases of uh, sort of electro music meant to be heard and not as much meant to be danced to. Does it make sense? So um, some CDs to um, to finish this uh, uh, video. You now this time I thought I will show some really unusual stuff that. Uh, is not very well known because what I do have, I have a lot of from the 90s, I have a lot of interesting compilations that are mostly from the realm of ambient or uh, experimental music or even uh, touching on industrial and musique concrete, etc. So I thought I will go through some of them. Most of them might actually be from Sub Rosa, which is a label I appreciate. And uh, so let's do it. Uh, I try to make it quick so it doesn't become this uh, super long video. Um, so this is uh, the Myth Collection, part one and part two by Sabrosa. Uh, this is part one. This is part two. Now uh, th there are some really household names on this. So you have like tracks by uh, Genesis P. Orich, uh, SPK is here. Paul Lemos and Joe Papa, you have uh, John Hassel. Current 93, again SPK, and uh, in between there are, for example, tracks by William S. Burroughs. 
so uh, you know that this is quite some evil stuff um, and yet uh, there are some nice uh, interesting discoveries and little gems in it so um, good stuff um, so this one is called coal heart forever and uh, it's a rather strange gloomy uh, archive music CD which contains uh, in parts uh, ritual music from Tibet uh, and then there are tracks which are more uh, sort of combination of two different uh, uh, sort of uh, ethnographical recordings from Turkey and North Africa so it's quite a strange one um, Continuum Asorbus is a rather an avant-garde compilation uh, with names like Scott Gibbons and Lilith and uh, Pierre Berthe or uh, Tobias Hazan so uh, that's still something to discover every day isn't it the Premises of Silence came out on uh, Hicks and Leones, which I think is an Italian label. And um, this is quite a cool ambient, uh, ambient CD compilation uh, with tracks by uh, like Steve Roach, Vidna Obmana, uh, Alio Die or Hybrids, so a lot of household names. You have Saffron Wood here, Robert Rich and Black Tape for a Blue Girl, Tom Perdue also. So, uh, that's actually quite a good one if you're looking for some new ambient material this might be for you um, what else? God, there's so many well this is uh, this one I actually got sent from uh, the guys from OUK Conjugate I didn't know about those one this is called a mu Solar a Music Travelogue uh, part 1 and part 2 uh, so it, it's got some uh, stuff that I really like like uh, Two is on it, although I knew these tracks from uh, their album. Uh, but you have like Still Point, which is uh, another Monica from the guy from Two. You have Oyukai Conjugate on it, Raksha Mancham uh, from Belgium, and uh, it's kind of mixed with all kind of interesting uh, sort of authentic music, so recorded in, on Bali, uh, so gamelan music, and so on. Um, yeah, Solar. Yeah, this one I remember. This is Arrhythmia. This is a uh, more uh, in the direction of uh, sort of electronic music, in the direction of um, industrial even. Um, so you have some uh, cool names on it, like uh, Dissecting Table or Dissecting Table, Crash Worship, ADRV. It's a cool, cool band. Master Slave Relationship, uh, Chop Shop. There's Muslim Ghosts on it. So it's a quite interesting, very eclectic compilation called Arrhythmia. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is quite forgotten now. Maybe not this one, because uh, when I went through life I realized that this CD uh, a lot of people actually uh, have in their collection, which is called Vutemas Archetypi, and uh, it's a quite a gloomy and yet strangely glorious uh, compilation with bands like SPK, Hunting Lodge and um, Leibach is on it with two tracks. Uh, uh, and Loose Mart. So um, that's quite a cool compilation. A lot of interesting music. So if you're looking for stuff that is just somehow completely different and completely left field and completely outlandish, this is actually a quite good CD to start this kind of journey. Vutemas Archetypi. Yeah, and this one uh, uh, is called the Danza de la Vida. I think I just heard it once or twice, uh, but um, I should give it another listen because it's some interesting people on it. There's uh, Werner Möbius on it, Rodelius, there's again Oyukai Conjugate on it, uh, um, and even a project called Broken Penis Orchestra. So, uh, who would want to miss that? And finally, this one. Now, this came with a magazine, I think, called Sonora. I must have this uh, magazine somewhere, it's a sort of underground magazine. And uh, this came with a compilation in the year 1991, as you can see here in the corner. Um, interesting people on it, people like uh, Roger Eno, uh, the brother of Brad Eno. There's in the nursery on it, uh, there are the legendary Pink Dots, uh, there's even Panko on it. So, um, 
this gives uh, the word eclectic a whole new meaning, I think. So, that's it for now. I hope this was interesting. Um, I'm able to show much more CDs now because I have just started to put some order and organization into my huge vast stacks of CDs that spent last year more lying around and uh, somewhere in the corners of the room and so and uh, I never got around to organize them and I've just started and um, that's always this kind of a phenomenon with CDs right because most of the time I kind of deal only with records and I kind of forget that I do have some couple of hundred or thousand <laughs> CDs <laughs> lying around and after a year or two you get to your CD collection just to realize that there are some amazing gems there that you just haven't heard and listened to for a very very long time. So the journey is never over. So uh, hope to see you next time and uh, have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>